For this video, what I want to do is show you how to graph the parent function for secant. So the parent function for secant is the equation f of x equals secant of x, or it could be y equals secant of x. You'll see them in both forms. Um, this is going to be our x-coordinate, and our x-coordinate represents the um, how much you've rotated around the circle, and I do have this in radians. You could also have it in degrees. It would be the same thing. You would just, instead of doing 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, you would do 0, 90, 180, uh, 270, 360. So you can have it in degrees. Just make sure that you know whether you're working in degrees or radians. I am going to be working in radians for this one. Okay, my y-axis or my f of x-axis is going to go here. Um, what I do to graph secant or cosecant is I always start with the reciprocal function because it's a lot easier just to remember one or two graphs than it is to remember all of them individually. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the graph of cosine x. So I'm going to start with graphing f of x equals cosine of x. Okay, and so if you recall with graphing this, basically what we're doing is we're taking the unit circle and we're unwinding it. So when we're at zero radians, our cosine at that point is one. Okay, when we're at pi over two, our cosine is zero. When we are at pi radians, our cosine is negative one, and then it goes back to zero, up to one, back to zero. Okay. Um, if we went around the circle in the opposite direction, so that means that we were dealing with negative radians, um, we would be at 0, negative 1, back to 0, back to 1, back to 0. Okay. Um, so since this isn't the ultimate graph that I'm graphing, I am just going to draw the cosine curve in here. All right, so what happens, and this would continue over and over again. This is something that would repeat, the pattern would repeat. Um, but where this helps us out at is that because secant is the reciprocal function, basically all of these points in between are just going to be inverted or flipped upward. Okay, one thing that we have to remember is that secant is undefined when cosine is zero because I can't do um, anything divided by zero. So remember that um, we do have places where there are going to be breaks in the graph of the secant function, and that's going to occur every time that our cosine function is zero. So what these become is these become vertical asymptotes, and I'm going to write that down for you so you remember. Um, sorry, I'm starting to look at the wrong line. All right, so we have our vertical asymptotes everywhere that our cosine function is zero because it is undefined at that point because anything divided by zero is undefined. And you don't have to do this many intervals. I was just trying to show you that it does repeat over and over again. All right, so let me write that down, is that you will have asymptotes At, and the equation for it is x equals 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, um, which means that this graph is discontinuous because it doesn't continue forever and ever in the same direction. It does stop at all x coordinates that are in the form 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, where n represents an integer. So at zero, um, you could have different numbers in here that would make it work out. Okay, so n is any integer. Basically, you're counting by every pi over 2. Um, 2 n plus 1 times pi over 2 is going to be where that's going to happen. All right, so what happens to our graph for secant? Um, and any time I'm graphing secant by hand and I'm not using technology to help me, um, I do start with graphing the cosine function that corresponds to that. It just makes it a lot easier. And then that way you can figure out where your turning points are going to be. So the graph of our actual secant function is this part right here is going to flip. All of these points are basically going to become a mirror image where they just flip upwards at this vertex point. So the orange is the graph of the secant.
So we're just taking each of these curves and we are flipping them and then they become a parabolic graph that gets closer and closer to the asymptotes, but it will never actually touch those vertical asymptotes. Okay, a lot of times you are asked for the domain and range. Um, the domain and range, you can do it in either interval notation or set notation. I'm gonna do it in a combination of the two just because it's easier to write. The domain, remember, is our x. So x is discontinuous at all of these points right here. So at all of these points, we have asymptotes. So x can be any number except for x cannot equal 2n plus 1 times pi over 2, where n is an integer. Okay, so starting at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, etc. Um, basically, it's just going up by 1 each time. Okay, uh, the range is easier to write in interval notation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it in interval notation. You could write it in set notation. I just prefer with this one to write it in interval notation, um, but it's kind of a matter of preference. Both of them are acceptable. The range on this, if you notice that we're only talking about the orange graph. So for our orange graph, our range is always our Y values. And so what's going to happen is our Y values can go from negative infinity up until we hit negative one, okay? So really this green graph is not part of our final answer, it's just there as a guideline to help us, okay? So the negative infinity to negative one, and I did not put a bracket, which I should have, um, negative one is included, so we do put a bracket around that. Or it can be from one to infinity. Okay, if you wanted to write this in set notation, you could write it as y such that um, y values can be less than or equal to negative one, or our y values can be greater than or equal to positive one. So if you would prefer to write it in set notation, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Okay, a couple other things that I just wanted to discuss with you is that this does have a period of 2 pi, so it does repeat after one full rotation around the circle. You'll notice that the graph starts to repeat itself after, so this part right here repeats every 2 pi. Okay, um, there is no amplitude. A lot of times you talk about the amplitude for... Um, your graphs of your cosine and your sine functions, but for this one there is no amplitude since there is no max or min. Okay, since it doesn't have a maximum point or a minimum point, you do not have amplitude. And for this one, it is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which makes it an even function. Okay, um, so if you notice that if I were to cut this in half and fold it over, they would be the same on both sides. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.